My name is Jennifer Lame. I edited Marriage Story with uh, Noah Bombeck, and I'm just here to talk about the process with Noah and uh, how I approach editing. I felt so lucky to have met Noah when I did um, because I love his, his movies kind of embody what I love about movies in general, which is just great characters, great writing, great storytelling, but just incredible complicated characters, which I love. So I love all different kinds of genres and all different kind of movies, but I do think I'm specifically drawn to just really complicated characters. He is so generous with allowing me to play around with stuff. Um, and he shoots the script he writes, so there's no really like ad-libbing or playing around during the shooting process. But while I'm editing, if I want to try cutting a line or switching stuff around, he's actually so generous and allows me to do that kind of stuff, which is funny because I just assume that's how all writer-directors were. And then when I was talking to other editor friends or a post-supervisor one time, I kind of mentioned like, well, it's so great working with a writer-director because they let you do whatever you want, kind of. And they're like, uh, no, it's the opposite. All writer-directors are so precious about their work. <laughs> don't let you do anything like and I was I was shocked because Noah is just he's just really loves the editing process and I think he's just excited to you know what's the harm if I try cutting out a bunch of lines or moving scenes or like he just is happy to see it and if he doesn't like it he doesn't like it but he always lets me try stuff on the Noah Bombach films that I work on we have a very specific process um, Noah calls it stacking I think most editors would call it string outs but we kind of do um, we do it line by line, and then I'll pull up my favorite line reading. And Noah actually can see on the Avid my favorite line reading, so it's fun, because they usually line up. And when they don't line up, we're kind of like, okay, what's this about? <laughs> because um, as we've done so many movies together, they're pretty in sync. Um, but yeah, I kind of start there, and then I really know the scene, and then I can go cut it from my stacks. You know, I just match frame and basically cut from my stacks on Noah's films and it's really helpful, especially with long dialogue scenes. It's so helpful to do it that way, to do kind of your first pass from your stack. Um, but on other films where it's more uh, moving around or like on Hereditary, I, didn't, I only did that really for the dialogue scenes. It, I didn't really find it helped on other, in other situations. So uh, in that case, I just watched the, you know, watch the shots, take the notes in the bin. I use a lot of markers you know, to mark moments that I like. Um, but yeah, I don't have like, I try to come out at each project to be pretty open to also other people's ideas of how to approach things. So I'm not like locked into a specific way. But on Noah's movies, I will always do those stacks. I talk to her all throughout the shoot. I, I, on the way to the set, I talk to her about the day ahead. At lunch, I talk to her about dailies. So we're always assessing the movie in a sense so that by the time we sit down together, I f we feel like, you know, we, we're not like approaching this totally, you know, like, we're, we're, like she's not looking at me like, what did you do? You know, uh, I, 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 we, 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 we've gotten there together in a sense. Also, I wouldn't have time to do an assembly because I'm on the phone with you all. Right. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was a couple scenes in the cutting room floor that I think were great scenes. It just, um, again, I think the big thing with this film was balancing the two characters. And there was a couple scenes later on in the film that it felt like, okay, if we do this and we're with this person at this stage in the film, maybe it might tip things. Not even, like, because the writing was very even keeled, but, like, when it's obviously different once it's filmed and it's in a linear form. And when you just are with a character a little bit more, that can have an effect. So we did have to cut some scenes that we loved for that reason. It's all, it is musical in a sense of, like, sometimes you cut, you work on a scene and you work really hard on it and you get, you know, to the end and then you watch it through. You try not to watch it through at the end of the same day that you cut it. Sometimes you can't help yourself, but there's always that like watching it at five or six or something, and you're like, oh god, and you, know, you got to go to dinner with that, and you're, you know, you know, um, uh, you know um, and then of course, yeah, we made I'm, a rule on this. Yeah, yeah, let's do, do it at this. We watch it the next day. Yeah. Um, but, then we have the whole day to kind of. You know, you're always so angry at yourself when you've done that. Yeah, when you push uh, play at six p.m. and you're like, oh, I go sit in the subway, and I'm just like, I hate you. Yeah, I know. It's a lot of texts from me, like you know. We'll get it, yeah. don't worry. Don't worry. Um, Noah and I had a great time cutting the courtroom scene. We just, um, we did it over a couple days and it kind of, once we got it, we got it. That was one of, that's a scene where we didn't really need to go back. Like it was like a puzzle. And once you fit the puzzle pieces together in the moments where they kind of jive, like there was no massaging it. It was kind of just like locked in, which is kind of satisfying. So even though we spent like a chunk of time on it. Once we were done, we were done, which is which was really fun. But I remember when I got the dailies on the courtroom scene, I was like, oh God, this is gonna be so intense. <laughs> um, but no, that was actually not so bad. 
I think being on set as an editor has its advantages and disadvantages. Um, its advantages being you're there, you can suggest things on the fly, if you notice something that wouldn't be helpful, you're there to help and support the director, it's just another voice alongside the script supervisor that can kind of help um, make sure you have everything, make sure the performances are kind of um, if you like think of a different line for a performance you might want to tweak later, it's just great in that way. I think the disadvantages are there is something to be said for certain scenes to kind of be separate from it and not see what's happened so you can kind of have a different idea. You know if it's like a bad day on set or there's weird vibes or if it's, um, if it's a location where you want to make sure that the audience kind of gets like understands where the characters are and um, navigating that, it's kind of helpful to not see it because then if you weren't there but the director was there, you can be like, no, I don't understand where these people are. <laughs> but if I was there, I might not have that perspective. You know what I'm saying? Um, but in general, I think it's just helpful and nice to be there. When I first moved out to LA after I graduated from college, I wanted to be in post and I was willing to do whatever. And, um, I actually met a woman who worked at, is it Mark Burnett? Yeah, um, the Buna Murray company, and she gave me a job doing um, kind of just typing in transcripts from videotapes of reality stuff overnight. So I worked the night shift there. Then they moved me up to Digitizer, which is like a bump up, because I think that was a day shift. Um, but yeah, and it was just like, it was really fun and bizarre, and <laughs> that was kind of my like gateway into the whole world. And then, actually, I found it difficult to penetrate the film industry out in L.A. because it's so big, and I didn't really know anyone. So I ended up going back to New York, getting an apprentice job from this um, now ed incredible editor, Jennifer Lilly. She gave me my first apprentice job in New York on Sidney Lumet's movie, Before the Devil Knows You're Dead, which was, I mean, working for him was like, getting to like see him do anything. Like I barely saw him at dailies, and he, but it was just incredible. Tim Strito, who I love, who's an editor in New York, he kind of called me and said he needed an assistant editor that if need be could edit, you know, if he had to leave early, because he was working on a bunch of projects. I actually think he had a new-ish baby at home, second kid, and. Um, he just was looking for an assistant who could provide some support if he needed it. And it was a very low budget project, so um, he just wanted that extra help, which I totally get. And uh, so he kind of interviewed me, we got along, and then I met Noah. I interviewed with Noah, and uh, yeah, that's kind of how it worked out. And I had just done a previous film with this editor, Michael Taylor, who I love, who did The Farewell, I think, this year. And um, he let me be an assistant, but also do the assembly. And he recommended me to Tim Strito. So it was kind of one of those, that was this film price check with Parker Posey. So it was one of those things where you just got to keep hustling and the editors that are generous and let you do stuff, you know what I mean? Because Michael was coming off another movie and so he was kind of like, you can do the assembly, but I'm going to come and then take over, but I have to finish this project. And it was just like, great, I'll do both. And you know, it's a lot of late nights, but it's super worth it. And uh, because I did that with Michael, he recommended me to Tim and was like, this girl can, be an assistant, focus on that, and also cut if you need her to. The advice I have for up and coming editors is to be curious, ask to sit in with editors if you feel like they're comfortable with that. Um, know your audience, obviously, but if you feel like an editor would be okay with that, I feel like ask to sit in, maybe ask to cut a scene and just for fun and just to show it to them. Um, yeah, and just constantly be curious and talk to people and, and establish relationships because a big part of why I'm where I am is because of so many generous editors giving me a chance when I was an assistant. And um, yeah, just that, you know, it's just being able to, the balance of working hard as an assistant but also asking for a little guidance, you know, and not being too, too, um, <laughs> too ambitious too quickly. But um which I learned too is, you know, it can be difficult. But yeah, and I, and I try to do the same. And my assistant on Hereditary actually helped me so much with the assembly and throughout the process. And I had to leave early because I had a baby and I gave him an editing credit because he helped edit the film. And I really believe in that. So, um, and now he's editing movies and he's incredibly talented. So I would like to do the same for people because it was done for me. <music> 
I know a lot of people do a lot of keyboard things, and uh, I like an old school mouse. But um, one feature I do like, which was on the newest Media Composer, that because of that I have to go to the newest Media Composer is the mute. I like muting things. Um, and uh, it's so helpful, muting, when you're, you work with directors who are very precious about sound and not having sound. Um, like with ADR and in the sound mix, they want um, audio available to them, like different alt takes. Like me and Noah pick the alt takes. We don't want the sound, someone on the sound stage picking it, because obviously they're great at their jobs, but it's like we know these performances and we don't want the performances altered. So what I do is I keep all these different readings constantly muted. And it translates when we do the OMF turnover. The sound guys can see it. Um, so yeah, I love mute. It's my favorite. I use it all the time. <laughs> uh, and besides that, I'm just like, yeah, I use little markers all the time. I love their markers, the marker system in Media Composer. Because I came from Final Cut. And I was a bit nervous switching. I was very intimidated by Avid. But I, I quite like how Avid is closer to film and the way you think about things when you're editing. And the, I really love it. So. Um, I've grown to love Avid. I always talk about how I like games and I came up on like computer games like King's Quest and all those nerdy games, but I'm like a gamer. So like, and I think of editing sometimes as a game because you're putting all these puzzle pieces together and when you figure a scene out, it's like you've like beaten a board or a level or something. So um, yeah, I've just always kind of liked that kind of stuff, using that part of your brain.